the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, this is Space Shuttle Discovery Launch Control. The countdown for the launch of Discovery on Space Shuttle Mission STS-53 is continuing on schedule this morning. We're currently in the standard two-hour built-in hold at the T-minus three-hour mark. About one hour and 40 minutes remain in our hold this morning. Launch of Discovery remains on time and set to occur at 6.59 a.m. Eastern Time this morning. The window remains open until about 10.07 a.m. today. Operations at Launch Pad 39A as well as operations here in Firing Room 1 of the Launch Control Center continue on schedule. We expect an on-time liftoff of the Shuttle Discovery and the five-member crew from Kennedy Space Center. On board the Shuttle Discovery is a Department of Defense payload. It is the ninth and the last DOD payload scheduled to fly on the shuttle. Also on board are two secondary payloads and nine mid-deck experiments. The five-member crew who will fly aboard Discovery today are Commander David Walker, Pilot Robert Cabana, Mission Specialist Guy Bluford, James Voss, and Michael Clifford. The crew is scheduled to be awakened at this time, and they will soon be seated for breakfast, following which they will receive a weather briefing on today's launch conditions and begin donning their flight suits. They are scheduled to depart their crew quarters for the launch pad on time at about 3.44 a.m. Upon their arrival at the pad, the crew will then begin entry into the shuttle Discovery. Today's launch represents the 15th flight of the Shuttle Discovery and the 52nd shuttle flight overall in NASA's Space Shuttle program. At launch, Discovery will be placed into a 200 by 200 nautical mile high circular orbit at an inclination of 57 degrees. Discovery is scheduled to land seven days from today back here at KSC on the three mile long shuttle landing facility. Earlier this morning, tanking operations commenced on time and a half million gallons of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen propellants were placed into the external tank. These fuels are used by the orbiter's three main engines. Tanking operations went as planned. Loading of the fuels began on time at about 10.39 p.m. last night and concluded just a short while ago at about 1.35 a.m. A special team called the ICE team is currently at the pad, recently being deployed there. They are in the process of making inspections and measuring the external temperatures of the vehicle following the loading of the supercold propellants. This team spends on average about two hours at the pad. Just within, the, just within the past hour, the launch test team completed their pre-ingress uh, switch list used to verify the shuttle's cockpit switches and have confirmed that they are all in the proper position and configuration for the flight crew's entry into the vehicle. Also, the air, the cabin air temperature has been adjusted. And just recently, the closeout crew has been deployed to the white room to prepare for the crew's entry. The rotating service structure was moved away from the vehicle yesterday at about 11 o'clock a.m. and is now in the park position where it will remain through launch. The weather forecast for this morning's launch attempt indicates that we have still about a 60% chance of getting off on time due to local weather concerns. Our current temperature at the pad is about 48 degrees and the winds are at about six knots. He'll be making his third flight today. Next to him is Guy Bluford, Mission Specialist 1, on his fourth flight today. And Mission Specialist 2, Jim Voss, making his second flight. Previously, we saw our pilot, Commander Bob Cabana, and Mission Specialist 3, Michael Clifford. The cake displays the emblem of the STS-53 insignia. It shows the Space Shuttle Discovery rising against the backdrop of an American flag.
Each of the five astronauts assigned for flight today have been thoroughly trained in their roles on this DOD mission. They have been working together as a team for several months in anticipation of this day. We do have live video of the five crew members being suited up for launch this morning. Shown here is our commander, Dave Walker. He'll be making his third trip into space this morning, donning his flight cap, which will go on under his uh, helmet. Pilot Bob Cabana is also seated, uh, ready to fly this morning on his second trip into space. Mission Specialist 1, or excuse me, Mission Specialist, yes, Mission Specialist 1, Guy, Guy Bluford, is making his fourth trip into space, and he will tie a record for, held by several astronauts for flying four times in, on the space shuttle. Five crew members are being assisted with their launch and entry suits by suit technicians from both KSC and the Johnson Space Center. These personnel are experts in the understanding of the details of how these suits work and how they protect the astronauts in the event of a problem during flight. Mission Specialist 3, Michael Rich Clifford, is making his first flight into space today. And mission specialist number two, Jim Voss, making his second trip into space today. Presently, they are pressurizing his suit to ensure that it is without leak. These bright orange colored suits are basically an altitude protection system. Uh, they include a helmet and a communications cap, uh, pressure garment and anti-exposure gloves and boots. Following launch and while on orbit, the crew members do change into more conventional and comfortable clothing. They are required to return to these suits prior to entry and landing. T-minus two hours, 54 minutes, and counting. And our five-member flight team has just left their crew quarters and making their way into the elevator, which will take them down three stories to the parked Astrovan, which will then carry them out to the pad 39A. Again, all events today and the countdown continue to proceed without technical problem. Standing by for the crew to walk out of the operations and checkout building and enter their astrovan. And our five astronauts have made their way out of the building. This is a military crew. Savannah, I'm gonna kill you. A couple of Army veterans on board, as well as uh, Marine, Navy. Of the crew, we have Commander David Walker, Pilot Bob Cabana, Mission Specialist Guy Bluford, Michael Clifford, and Jim Voss. Riding along with the crew in the Astrovan are members of the flight crew office, uh, also a security officer and other astronauts who will be performing weather assessment functions for the launch attempt this morning. 
Astronaut Lawrence Shriver will be piloting the shuttle training aircraft from the shuttle landing facility. This STA will be used for weather reconnaissance prior to and during launch of Discovery today. This is Shuttle Launch Control at T-minus 2 hours, 36 minutes and counting. And the flight crew has just arrived at the pad surface. They are exiting the Astro van at this time. Five-member crew is preparing to make the ascent up the fixed service structure elevator to the 195-foot level of the launch pad, where they will then begin entry into the shuttle Discovery. Everything continues on schedule this morning for a scheduled liftoff at 6.59 a.m. Eastern Time. The NASA test director, Al Safji, is giving approval for the crew to begin entry into the vehicle. And they will soon be taking their assigned positions. Commander Walker and pilot Cabana will be the first to enter the orbiter, as is normally the custom for the shuttle commander and his pilot. Black and white video now shown of the crew at the 195-foot level as they make their way across the orbiter access arm. and a live shot of our white room at pad 39A. Members of the closeout team are greeting the astronauts as they step into the closeout room for the first time this morning. Two, one, mark. And we are at T minus nine minutes and counting. And the ground launch sequencer has been initiated. NASA test director Al Safchi is about to call for the transmittal of stored pre-launch commands as Discovery is only nine minutes from launch on a trajectory that will take it north of the eastern coast of the United States. T-minus eight minutes and counting. The orbiter test conductor has requested that Houston send stored program commands, which will make the orbiter compatible with the downrange tracking stations. Copy. And pilot Cabana is now flipping switches in the cockpit to directly connect the three fuel cells to the essential power buses. And we are now retracting the orbiter access arm away from the crew hatch of the vehicle. This is the walkway used by the crew to gain entry into and out of the vehicle. It can be returned to position within seconds if need be. T minus seven minutes and counting.
ARPS, start APU, and hydraulic trip start the recorder. Here we have copies that and complete. PLT, perform APU pre start. OTC PLT, APU pre starts in work. The orbiter test conductor has given Discovery's pilot, Bob Cabana, a go to perform the auxiliary power unit pre start procedure. T minus 5 minutes, 55 seconds and counting. OTC PLT, APU pre starts complete three gray talkbacks. Copy three gray. Good Good Recorders are activated left to match quarter. Copy. Pilot Cabana has reported that the pre-start of the auxiliary power units is complete. APU activation will come in just a few seconds. Go for orbiter APU start. PLT, perform APU start. And we have a go for APU start. APU starts in work. The auxiliary power unit activation has been reported. Reconfigure heaters. Here we are. We'll go. OTC PLT, three good APUs. Got three good APUs. Pilot Cabana reports that the APUs are reported good. heaters are reconfigured. The main fuel valve heaters on the three shuttle main engines have been turned on at this time in preparation for launch today. T minus four minutes and counting. Yeah, let's go for third sequence four. A final test of the flight control surfaces is now being conducted. This is a programmed pattern of movements designed to verify the readiness for launch of the engines and other flight control surfaces. We are now transferring to orbiter internal power at this time. Discovery is now running off its three onboard fuel cells. T minus three minutes and counting. All is continuing to go well for today's launch of the Space Shuttle Discovery. PLS go for ET LOT pressurization. PLT, clear caution and warning memory. Verify no unexpected errors. Roger, caution and warning is clear. No unexpected errors. The gaseous oxygen vent hood will soon be slowly retracted away from the top of the external tank. Minus two minutes and counting. Close and lock your visor and initiate O2 flow. The flight crew has been instructed to close their sun visors. Close the visors, open O2. T minus one minute, 45 seconds and counting. Everything continues to look good for launch this morning. And in about 90 seconds, we will see the release of nearly 7 million pounds of thrust as the shuttle Discovery begins its seven day flight. One minute, 30 seconds. T 
T-minus one minute, 15 seconds. One minute. T-minus one minute and counting. Everything is still looking good. It's a beautiful day for launch here on the east coast of Florida. T-minus 45 seconds, coming up for a go for auto sequence start. We have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's four onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. 20. 20. T-minus 15 seconds. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. We have a go for main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And liftoff. Liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery on a seven-day mission for the Department of Defense. Houston is now controlling. Discovery is maneuvering onto course. Roger roll, Discovery. Roll maneuvers complete. Placing Discovery and crew on the proper heading. Engines at 100%. are throttling back now. I think it needs discovery through the dense lower altitudes as it continues to accelerate rapidly. Engine throttles are now at 73%. is passing through the range of maximum dynamic pressure and three engines are throttling back up. Discovery, go at throttle up. Roger, go at throttle up. All engines are now running at full throttle and all systems are performing well. Altitude is now 68,000 feet. Discovery is traveling over 1,000 miles per hour. Over the next 60 seconds, as Discovery continues to climb at a relatively steep angle, the vehicle's rate of speed will virtually triple. The solid rocket boosters, each providing up to three and a third million pounds of thrust, will burn out and separate at about two minutes, four seconds. Time now, one minute, 48 seconds. Altitude, 114,000 feet, downrange, 18 nautical miles. Booster chamber pressure is beginning to diminish. We're standing by for staging. Discovery is now flying free of the solids and under the power of its own main engines. Second stage guidance is now controlling the vehicle. Altitude 178,000 feet, downrange distance 47, 37 nautical miles. Discovery, performance nominal. Performance. Discovery to engine tau. Discovery can now cross the Atlantic Ocean with only two engines should one fail. Early performance of the main engines and boosters was good. Discovery is now traveling over 3,500 miles per hour, altitude 233,000 feet, downrange distance 58 nautical miles. Discovery continues to accelerate very rapidly at this point, shedding weight as propellant burns off. The orbiter's trajectory is also beginning to level out a bit as Discovery and crew head out over the Atlantic Ocean. Altitude now 264,000 feet, downrange distance 74 nautical miles. Discovery is now traveling over 4,000 miles per hour. Time, 3 minutes, 38 seconds. Altitude, 295,000 feet. Downrange distance, 100 nautical miles. 
All systems are performing well. Discovery, negative return. Discovery, roger, negative return. A return to the launch site is no longer an option at this point as Discovery continues downrange. Altitude is now 335,000 feet, downrange distance 145 nautical miles. Discovery is traveling nearly 5,000 miles per hour at this point. Copy that discovery. We got you loud and clear now through the teeters. Houston Discovery, we got to go for APU shutdown on time. And stand by, Bob. We're pulling the room. Discovery Houston, Bob, your go for APU shutdown on time. Roger, APU shutdown's in work. This is Mission Control Houston, ASN Flight Director Wayne Hale has just gone around the room uh, soliciting reports from all flight controllers on uh, performance of their systems during the ascent. The ascent was described by most as great, good, nominal, no problems. Uh, at this point, the uh, crew aboard Discovery has completed their main propulsion system uh, dumping the vacuum, cleaning out that system and uh, using the vacuum of space to remove any residual fuel in those lines. They'll, uh, they've been given a go to shut down the auxiliary power units on time as the cooling systems are up and running to cool those systems down uh, as it normally should. Now we copy Discovery. Discovery Houston, we show you uh, using nominal OMS-2 targets. Uh, estimated OMS-2 time is 37 colon zero zero. You can use the TIG uh, in the target set.
last I'm showing an off flag on my LO2 uh, manifold pressure. I just left. Okay, here's saying I'm going to complete the steps up to if uh, LO2 manifold pressure less than 40. And uh, Discovery, Bob, we can confirm the pressure is less than 40. You can continue with the procedure. Okay, thank you. Die amerikanische Raumfähre Discovery startete heute zu ihrer letzten militärischen Mission. Künftig will das Militär billigere, unbemannte Raketen verwenden. Die Fähre hat inzwischen die Umlaufbahn erreicht und wird einen Spionagesatelliten aussetzen, der nach Expertenaussagen Truppenansammlungen und militärische Anlagen überwachen kann. Die fünf Astronauten, die den Streitkräften angehören, testen auf dem siebentägigen Flug unter anderem Radargeräte zur Bahnvermessung von Raumfahrtschrott. Mit 90 Minuten Verspätung hat heute Mittag die amerikanische Raumfähre Discovery abgehoben. Im Auftrag des US-Verteidigungsministeriums setzen die fünf Astronauten einen Satelliten aus. Er soll Spannungsgebiete in Asien und dem Nahen Osten beobachten und fotografieren. An Bord befinden sich diesmal fünf Astronauten. Mit fast 90 Minuten Verspätung war die Discovery vom Kennedy Space Center gestartet. Der Grund, eine für Florida ungewöhnlich kalte Nacht, hatte zur Eisbildung an den Treibstofftanks geführt. Die Astronauten werden sich in den kommenden sieben Tagen auf geheimer Mission im Weltraum aufhalten. Unter anderem soll ein Spionagesatellit ausgesetzt werden. Wie es hieß, handelt es sich um den letzten Raumfährenflug im Auftrag des amerikanischen Verteidigungsministeriums. 
In Cape Canaveral im US-Bundesstaat Florida ist am Nachmittag die Raumfähre Discovery zu ihrer 15. Mission gestartet. Die fünf Astronauten an Bord sollen noch heute einen Spionagesatelliten im All aussetzen. Wegen zu niedriger Außentemperaturen hatte der Start um eineinhalb Stunden verschoben werden müssen. Bereits in der vergangenen Nacht war in Kourou in französisch Guayana eine europäische Ariane-Rakete gestartet worden. 20 Minuten nach dem Abheben setzte sie einen japanischen Fernmeldesatelliten aus. Es war der siebte und letzte Start einer Ariane in diesem Jahr. Das Vorhaben sollte die Suche nach sogenanntem Weltraummüll verbessert werden. Die fünf Astronauten an Bord der Raumfähre Discovery mussten ein wichtiges Experiment wegen technischer Probleme streichen. Ein Gerät, das Stahl- und Aluminiumkugeln im Weltall aussetzen sollte, versagte. Die Besatzung befürchtete daraufhin eine Gefährdung ihrer Mission und setzte die Arbeit mit anderen Experimenten fort. Am 9. Dezember sollte Discovery zur Erde zurückkehren. Tage länger als geplant im All. Die Mannschaft fliegt jetzt Warteschleifen. Wegen schlechten Wetters muss die Landung verschoben werden. Für die Astronauten heißt es jetzt Strom sparen. Zwar reicht die Energieversorgung locker für zwei Tage, aber am Boden überlegen die Experten, die Discovery vielleicht sogar noch einen dritten Tag im All zu lassen. Der NASA-Flug ist die letzte bemannte Militärmission. Washington will künftig nur noch Raketen ins All schicken. Auf dem Luftwaffenstützpunkt Edwards in Kalifornien gelandet. Aufgrund schlechter Wetterverhältnisse in Florida hatten die Astronauten auf die Westküste ausweichen müssen. Dadurch verzögerte sich die Landung um etwa eineinhalb Stunden. Die Mission war der 52. Shuttleflug. Die lange die amerikanische Raumfähre Discovery ist vor einer Stunde sicher auf dem Luftwaffenstützpunkt Edwards gelandet. Die fünf Astronauten hatten die Landung wegen schlechter Sicht über Florida nach Kalifornien verlegen müssen. Sicher auf dem Luftwaffenstützpunkt Edwards in Kalifornien gelandet. Aufgrund der schlechten Wetterverhältnisse in Florida hatten die Astronauten auf die Westküste ausweichen müssen. Dadurch verzögerte sich die Landung um etwa eineinhalb Stunden. Die Mission war der 52. Shuttleflug. Weltraummission mit Pannen. Die amerikanische Raumfähre Discovery ist in Kalifornien gelandet. Die siebentägige Mission im All war von einigen Pannen begleitet. Die Crew konnte zwar einen Militärsatelliten aussetzen, viele andere geplante Experimente schlugen aber fehl. Probleme gab es auch nach der Landung. Weil giftige Gase aus einem Triebwerk austraten, konnten die Astronauten das Shuttle erst nach zwei Stunden verlassen.